Hey, my name is Tejon Hope. I used to play basketball at Manhattanville College and recently decided not to, and this is my basketball story. So, one of the original reasons why I fell in love with basketball was my father, Jockey's Hope. My father played basketball in high school. He's a real good basketball player, and now he's in the military. And ever since I was little, everybody knows how, you know, their sons look up to their father. So my dad would take me with him to Maryland when he was in the army. And he played basketball with his friends and my dad was always the best one. So I'd wait till after his basketball games and try to play him one on one. And my father knows between me and him after the 200 games of one on one, even though I won the last three, he probably has the other 195 games. But that's cool. So as I grew up and I would always look forward to seeing my father, the first thing I would think about is a basketball game. So I find my way to every outside basketball court, every inside basketball court, and just find a way to practice regardless of if there was snow, rain, if there was no type of transportation, I still have my legs. So um, I just worked on basketball consistently every single day. It was always the most hard worker, the most humble, and just stay focused and let nothing get in my way until I got to college. And when I got to college, everything stayed the same. So um, unfortunately, I decided not to play anymore because college basketball is a business. Um, sometimes when things become a business and you have to wake up all the time and commit yourself to one thing and you're not receiving any type of benefits like guaranteed playing time or anything like tuition at a division three school it just starts getting hard and one of the many reasons why i stopped playing basketball was before i did get to college it was nothing but pure passion i understood what it took to be a high school player but being on the high school level sometimes you never understand what it takes to be a college player yeah i know i work hard you work hard we all work hard but once you get to college, that working hard is completely washed away and it's reinvented into something different. And that's not what scared me away. What scared me away was the outcome of working hard. Sometimes just because you work the hardest, just because you're the best player here or the worst player there, just because you know somebody on the team, just because you know the coach, there could be so many positive aspects that should give you the reason or should give you the minutes that you deserve. And sometimes you just don't get it. And me, fortunately, I was a great teammate. I still am a great teammate. No matter how much time I put in, no matter how many jerseys I washed, just so my teammates could have extra clean jerseys so we could find another positive thing to look into in practice. Just because I studied every scout quiz and got every scout quiz correct, just because the coach told us to shoot 200 shots before the game and I was the only name on the sheet to shoot 1,500 and make all 1,500 because I didn't leave till I made 1,500 doesn't mean I got what I deserved. Just because I was going harder in practice, showing up at 5 a.m. for 6.30 practice, leaving at 9.30 when practice ended at 8 o'clock just to get a little bit better, doesn't mean that I was gonna get what I deserved. Just because I went super hard in practice and proved myself day in and day out that I deserved an extra minute or an actual shot, doesn't mean people are gonna see it that way. And you know what, that's fine. Because just as my coach told me, and he told me this from day one, and I thank him for this because it did actually help me see something is that this adversity that I'm going through is turning me into a better person every single day. I put all these hours into the gym and even though it didn't turn out the outcome I needed to get the playing time on the court that I so thought I deserved, what it did, it made me a better person. It made me realize that I could put this hard work into anything in life and actually get somewhere. If you ask me, do I still love basketball? Basketball is always gonna be my number one love, regardless of what it is. I didn't sign up with a guarantee to go to the NBA or I didn't sign up with a guarantee to get paid. I signed up because of the way basketball made me feel and the way that basketball carried me throughout my life daily. There's kids out there that are doing all types of things that they shouldn't be doing simply because they don't have anything that they should actually commit themselves to. And the day that I found the thing that I wanted to commit myself to being basketball, I couldn't let it go. Um, a lot of people who know me, they know like I commit myself to basketball even though I don't play anymore. And I still have people asking me, would you play overseas? Or did you ever dream about being in the NBA? But I mean, what kid didn't, you know? Being from New Jersey, all you do is see players like Carmelo Anthony, Kemba Walker, all these St. John's and Syracuse basketball players in the world, just imagine what it must be to ride the subway every day, just seeing all these New Yorkers. So I would sit here, watch YouTube, watch M1 basketball players like Hot Sauce and just, you know, Allen Iverson and just like dream of having a shot in the NBA, even if it was one shot. I just imagine myself walking down the court and hitting that one shot ever since I was little. And even though I'm older, you know, just because I know it's not gonna happen doesn't mean I can let go of that dream. It could be any day I could just step on the NBA court and just get my shot. If there was anything I could ever say about basketball is as much as I love it, I can't, I don't know if I can imagine myself coaching one day a team, but if there is one thing I could do is definitely train kids. 
You know, that's something I've always wanted to do. Like aside from basketball, even on my team, after I'd be in the gym for hours shooting, I'd try to hit up some of my teammates and ask them to come and get shots up or if they want me to train them or help them because basketball is a team sport. It doesn't matter how good you are, or how good you can be, but if your team has the weak link, then your team is just as strong as your weakest link. So I may not ever coach a team, but when it comes down to training who like little kids or adults to any age, anybody that has the love for the game, no matter how good you are, that's not what matters. It defines you. What defines you, the passion you have for the game. So I'm absolutely willing to train anybody, anyone, no matter what they are. If they have any disabilities, it doesn't matter because that's not what you need to play the game of basketball. After all of this, all, all the adversity that I went through, um, you know, I learned a couple things and a couple things I've heard from people in my position. You don't play basketball and work hard because you're guaranteed an outcome. Every time you work hard, you're just guaranteed a little more extra luck to get into that position that you need because with this lifestyle, there's so many people that are doing the same thing you're doing every single day. You're not the only one waking up at 5 a.m. And if you're not waking up at 5 a.m., you're not the only one not waking up at 5 a.m. There's always going to be somebody doing the things that you're doing. And just because you do it longer or you put more time into it, it doesn't mean that you're guaranteed. It's what you do with the time that you put into it. Instead of people just messing around on the court, there's people that get on the court and get straight to business. For any athlete out there, not just basketball, if you really want to go to college or you want to be a professional, the best advice I can give to you right now is you have to dedicate everything you do to the sport with academics. No matter how good you are, no matter if you are the number one ranked player in the country, if you do not have the academics to follow or match your skill, schools will never take you. But if you have good grades or average grades and you're a good player or a great player, they're gonna give you all the money you need to go there for free. But if you're wondering what the day in a life looks like inside of an athlete before they get to college, which actually makes them get to college, I can tell you what it is right now. Every morning I'd wake up, I'd brush my teeth, you know, eat, go to school, and I'd focus in class, but any break I had between class, the 10 minute period I had, I'd go straight to YouTube and I'd watch basketball mixtapes. i watch my favorite players like Trevor Dunbar, Marcus LeVette, Akil Carr, some of the greatest YouTube sensations out there, and i just watch every single basketball video there was. When I tell you that I've watched so many Balls Life videos, so many Hoop Mixtape videos, that if you played the song from the video, I could tell you whose video it is, what movie he's doing in the video. I am the definition of a basketball fiend. If you ask anybody what I do all day, it's basketball. When you're in high school or when you're in middle school, you have to realize the difference between doing what you need, which is necessary, and doing what you want and being around people. If you surround yourself around people who are doing negative things, then you're gonna be in a situation where you don't want to be. You are an average of the people that you hang around with. So if you're hanging around people that don't want the same goals and don't wanna be committed to the same things, then you could just kiss your dreams goodbye. What I did when I was in high school, I didn't go to one, party in high school until I graduated. And when I graduated, those are graduation parties. I didn't touch alcohol, I didn't touch drugs, I didn't do anything that I didn't need to do because they aren't necessities. And I get into the basketball gym. During class, I focused on everything I needed to do. When I was at lunch, I sat with the friends that played basketball and I watched YouTube videos, again, doing basketball. I go to practice, I stay after a little bit later. I get shots up after practice. And if we didn't have practice, if it wasn't during the season, as soon as I got home, I go to my nearby gym from when I got out of school at 2.30 p.m and my grandmother wouldn't pick me up till 9 p.m. I didn't really touch weights until I got to be a junior in high school, until I knew I was a little more developed. Unfortunately, I was short all the way until I got to college and I finally hit six foot, but you have to remember, you know, you want to treat your body healthy. So when I would get home, I wouldn't go out and party and don't, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that I wasn't on Xbox, because I most definitely was on Xbox, but I was on Xbox for a little bit of period of time, and sometimes I'd stay up till two or three in the morning just watching basketball videos, because I just loved basketball so much that I just couldn't get away from it. I just, I just couldn't stop. I had all the basketball gear. I'd wear sweats with basketball teams. You couldn't find me wearing jeans at all. I never wore jeans in high school. I think I had one pair of jeans, and I wore them one time. And all my friends knew that I had all types of AAU sweatpants from NBA teams, from AAU teams, from high school teams. Sometimes I'd wear a different high school gear to my high school team just because I stopped wearing blue. I just didn't like blue. <laughs> Where'd you get those from? I just didn't want to wear blue today. So I have sweats from a different school. But if you ever want to know how serious it is, when I'm telling you that you have to look at basketball and practice like you're an NBA player years before you're in the NBA, that's the only chance you'll ever get at getting to the NBA the NFL, the NHL, the MLB, 
whatever it may be, whatever sport it is, whatever major it is, you have to practice and you have to commit yourself to the game the way that an NBA player or a professional player will commit yourself to the game. For a lot of players or a lot of people watching, if they're wondering like what I go overseas or what's the pros and cons of overseas, let me tell you what it really is because a lot of people don't know. A lot of people think overseas is like the NBA, you know, it's just the NBA overseas. And for some leagues that's true, you know, you have the China Basketball League, you have teams like Turkey, you have the Euro Leagues, the teams that play in the Olympics like Spain and Africa and so on, Argentina, we all know the teams that USA smacks every four years. So the truth is about overseas is set up like college basketball. For college basketball, there's Division One, Two, II, and Three for college and for overseas there's tier one, tier two, tier three. Tier one being the best, just as division one being the best for college. Now, unfortunately, overseas, if you're in tier three, sometimes you're not guaranteed your money. Even in tier two, you're not. I know multiple stories and multiple players who names I won't name, but they play in places like Mexico, which is tier two. There's a tier two team in Mexico or Romania, there was a tier two team and he played and he was guaranteed $140,000 contract and $25,000 into the money after late payments over a nine month cycle of overseas basketball, he didn't get the rest of the money. He only got 25,000. After that, he had to come home and work a job in the supermarket just to go back overseas the next year. And the thing about overseas, players are so replaceable. Overseas basketball, there is no loyalty to a player. If you had an amazing season last season, averaging an astounding 35 points per game, which is little to none like you know there's no lebron james overseas but if you were averaging 35 points you'd be like oh wow like i'm definitely gonna get this huge contract next year i'm guaranteed this and that if you sprain your ankle and you're out for two months not even if you sprain your ankle and you're out for a month you could kiss that contract goodbye because the minute that they find someone younger that could play or someone that's a little bit better or near the same skill level they forget about you the difference is with college basketball, going to the NBA, you have to at least do one year of college. You have to at least be one year removed from high school. Overseas, they start playing at 16 years old. And I usually haven't heard anybody overseas older than the age of 26. In the NBA, you hear players from 18 all the way to 40. The age overseas is so slim. Like the actual window to play is so slim and it's so hard that if you don't play for these amazing teams that you hear about all the time in the Olympics, your overseas like experience is horrible. I hear stories about people, people's hotels getting broken into overseas and all their stuff getting taken. Could you imagine what have happened to that person if he was in that room, if he or she was in that room when all the people broke in just to play basketball? Sometimes you have to realize that things are bigger than basketball. Are you ready to take a jump, a leap of faith that is, you know, not guaranteed to get the money you want, guaranteed safety, guaranteed playing? You know, nothing's guaranteed, so that's why I don't think I would take the opportunity. But if I was guaranteed a position to play at a EuroLeague team that was Tier 1 or a team like China, if I was able to play in their association where I know basketball is huge and you're treated the same way NBA players are treated in the United States, then I would definitely take the opportunity. But those chances are slim to none, just like it is to play in the NBA sometimes. So after all this playing and all these hard decisions, one thing that didn't change is what I actually want to do with basketball. As I mentioned before, I want to use basketball as a platform to help and benefit my brothers and sisters in our community. So me and my closest friend, Willie, we decided that in a couple years after we get our funding and our market correct, we want to open up nonprofit organizations, one starting in Queens, New York, and another one being a play for New Jersey, my hometown. We're going to open up these nonprofit organizations which are free to the community, the kids, the boys and the girls of the community. As long as they go to school, they get free haircuts, school supplies, food if they need them, meals. We'll have pastors, priests over here, anything that they need to have religion implemented into their life and also have the opportunity to step on the court and have funding and have bigger brothers and bigger sisters around. Because if they have bigger brothers and bigger sisters around in our position, when we went through the, you know, the limitless ends of adversity, they could see and understand that there's always a positive outcome to the negative situation that they're in. Because people around know that Queens, New York, Plainfield, New Jersey, all these cities that people call the hood, the ghetto, with all the students in there that are ghetto and 
just all these words aren't true. We just have the kids that don't have the opportunity and also don't have the vision that everybody else has. And I believe the minute that these kids, our brothers and sisters have the vision that they need to see, they're gonna be locked on, focused, and they're gonna have the same burning passion that I have, that all the people have today, and they'll be able to succeed at a level that's completely unbelievable. And that's the best part. You wanna change a statistic, get rid of the stereotype, and create a new stereotype a new stereotype full of positivity, African-American females and males graduating from college at a higher percentage than any other race, having higher grades, having all these scholarships and not having to worry about money just simply because they dedicated their lives at a young age to something. And it doesn't necessarily have to be basketball. Like I said, we're offering education services, tutoring, anything they need. But if you have brothers and sisters around you that did things that you couldn't believe that anybody else did, then you realize that you could do the same thing. Now, on the side, since I stopped playing basketball and I do have more time to commit my free time and create more hobbies for myself and have a, you know, more breathability in my time schedule, I decided to create a YouTube channel, one with my best friend and one with my girlfriend. So I use both of these channels to create a platform, just have fun, you know, um, be able to have some breathability in my schedule besides work and besides class, like have something to look forward to, you know, creating videos and editing them and just having fun with them and being able to post them and just see people's reaction. Now, personally, I am more on the side of having guarantees. So I know if I use my brain and study and commit myself to my academics as I will and plan to do in the future, that I can have a guaranteed outcome of having a good position. But on the side, it's still fun to have a dream. So. Everybody knows what happens to people on YouTube when they do blow up. So if I do happen to blow up on YouTube, then you can say goodbye to work. <laughs> I'm just playing. If I do blow up on YouTube, I'll just use that platform, as I said earlier, to deliver a message to those around me and have fun for it, you know. But my main focus right now is delivering my brain and using it to advance myself through the fields of academics and then eventually into a job that can actually give me a well-paying position in our community. And then when I do that, hopefully I'll have a type of title where people will understand that, you know, he's not just some regular person that has a job. He's a proud, he is a gifted, he is a educated African-American male in today's society who obviously went through um, all types of adversity that did nothing but push me further in our community. You know, if I had any information or any words or advice for anyone that's ever gonna be in my situation, you can't let the adversity slow you down because nobody wants to hear your story until you make it. If you look at all these NBA all-stars, all these superstars, even down to the average Joe on the bench, every single one of them has like this amazing dream that started from the darkness and is nothing but light right now. And if you keep saying to yourself that you can't make it because these obstacles in front of you are too big, just think about what happens when you pass an obstacle that's so big. The next obstacle that's in front of you will never be as big. You just have to commit yourself. I never thought I was going to make it to college. People say I would never make it to college through high school and I got to college. And you know what? Once I got there, I realized this is as far as I want to go. And this is as far as I need to go to make myself happy. So I say one thing, you don't let anybody decide what your passion is or when to stop your passion or when to keep going or why you should have your passion. That's only there for you. You could take the advice of others, but let it be advice and never let it be the journey or the wall that's going to form the path and the decision that you have to make in life every single day. Things are bigger than basketball. I understand how big the passion is to some of you and how it's everything, but we as African-Americans, as people, brothers and sisters in this community, we have to use these outlets to create bigger communities for those out there to hear us. Nobody wants to hear someone who sits in their house all day, but if you're an NBA superstar like LeBron James, everyone in the world wants to hear what you have to say. So I have to say, you know, be the difference. Use this platform to get your word, to get your positive messages to the community around you because the minute that we all strive as a family, there's gonna be more people to help each of us succeed. That's all I have to say about basketball.